All right. So we would have been done had I not got an email from Slovenia the other night saying, hey, we're in town. Could you hook us up? So I'm like, okay. So herein is uh, e-paper uh, brought to us uh, from Slovenia, but more than that. And how do you say Visionect is the name of the company. And while these guys set, while these guys set up, I'm like double fist your microphones. Here, you take that one. Um, after these guys are done, we're going to do something really cool that we do all the time. It's called 60-second spots. Basically, it's like open mic for geeks. So if you have something that you're looking for or something that you're offering or if you've got something cool to say or promoting something, grab the microphone. You've got 60 seconds, okay? After that's done, we're done. Then we can go home or go downstairs and go to the bar or whatever. Sound good? Yeah? So if, if – yeah, I like clapping. That's good. So think about your 60-second spots now, folks, okay? Don't be shy. We don't bite. Or if we do, it's not that hard. Ready to roll? Go. Let's do it. Okay. Um, okay. So hi. We're Matei and Luca. We come from uh, VisionX. We're a hardware company um, based in a very small European country called Slovenia. You probably never heard of. But anyhow, um, we're, we're here to show you the platform that we've been developing for the past eight years. It's the e-paper platform designed to change one certain uh, world. So imagine a world in which all uh, printed surfaces like billboards, outdoor ads, uh, traffic signs, bus stops and so on are replaced with self-sustainable displays and um, connected to the internet. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're enabling uh, digital signage displays to be uh, put into environments never before thought possible. So as I mentioned before, we started eight years ago uh, developing our first tablet device, e-paper based, which is a pretty unique device because it can work for months on one battery charge. Um, it's very robust. We uh, like to say that you can wash it in a washing machine if you want to and has no physical buttons, not even an on-off, just works all the time. Um, and this platform was built, uh, this device was built on the platform that we mentioned and is lately being used by a lot of digital signage companies. Um, why? Because on the, your right side, that's our solution, um, can be self-sustainable and compared to LED and LCD uh, technology, consumes less than 1% of uh, power, which means that in the end it dwarfs the total cost of ownership compared to the solution on your life uh, left. On. Um, our platform, uh, three key ingredients, uh, electronic paper displays, we support anything from 6 inch to 32 inch displays, then you have our electronics, our driving unit, and uh, server software. So I'm going to hand this over to Luca, who's going to show do the demo. Hi, guys. I'm going to try and show you um, what Matei was talking about in uh, physical form. So uh, like Matei mentioned, uh, we have, let me just swap this. Like Matei mentioned, uh, we have a bunch of different devices that connect to a central server. Uh, we call that server a VisionX server. And the server is a part of our platform. Uh, it comes free with every device that we sell. Uh, and you're able to run the server software on your PC or on your virtual machine or in the cloud and use that to build your own e-paper, connected e-paper product. Uh, this can be small or big depending from what type of hardware you pick from, uh, from our offerings. Um, so an important thing about our devices, they are thin clients, so no, da no data is stored on the devices themselves. Um, this ki kind of architecture allows us to build very power efficient uh, hardware to drive all those units. That's the 1% that Matei was talking about before. Um, so as soon as the device connects to the server, um, it shows up in, in the list of the devices. Let me just refresh that. And you can see that there's one here, uh, it's online. And it, uh, the server starts tracking its battery state, signal strength, and all the other parameters. At the same time, you're able to completely manage all the hardware aspects of the device. You can restart it, reboot it, uh, up upgrade the firmware, set the display screen, basically everything you, you can uh, about the device. Uh, and since it's uh, 
uh, a thin client uh, device that connects to the server, you can do a really uh, cool thing and look what's actually displayed on the screen. So right now you can see there's an app here running on this uh, device and as I'll, I'll click on this device, you can see this is, uh, it's uh, visible directly on, uh, on the server itself. Um, so, um, th this app that I've shown you is one of the apps that has been built using our platform and it's been used by a major telco to, to showcase uh, mobile phones uh, in their stores. Um, besides that, you, you, we also collect all the telemetry data behind the, the how the, the, oper the device operates, so you're able to see the graphs of battery usage, signal strength, and, and the works. Now, apps themselves are simple web apps. Uh, they built using HTML5 and JavaScript, so the app that you've seen here is a regular uh, web app, and you can see how it works. Um, so, using this, um, this infrastructure, uh, we've built a couple of really cool applications. Um, let me just go to the slide. So, for instance, this is the application w that we did with mobile stores. Um, we're using the same technology, you can even build roadside sci science, and this is a project that we did for Australia. Um, we did some uh, indoor science, uh, science for traffic companies, and we can even build a room booking system using this uh, software. Um, and uh, we, we have development kit kits available, so, uh, and we're also doing a special offer for this event, so um, user contacts and drop us a line and we'll provide you a really good price. Thanks. Right on guys, thank you. <laughs> nice work, so hands up for questions. Somebody, anybody? Al, and then Ann. Al first, Ann second. You can't let Ann ask all the questions. Um, so you guys are making sort of an environmental pitch, which I think is good. How many sheets of paper does it take to equal one of your tablets? So for an advertiser, you know, obviously the printing and placing of a piece of printed material has some cost associated with it. How many of those do I have to do before or ignore before the tablet starts to make se uh, sense as a replacement? I think the, 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 Hundreds? Co the, the cost of the paper is not as high as the cost of labor and the cost of transportation to change that paper. So it's about the, I, it's the, the connected cost. And okay. um, the devices, if you deploy, uh, I, even if you deploy, change schedules very infrequently, um, mm -hmm. I, you wouldn't, uh, the price is actually really, really high for the transportation for the people. The okay, so I, yeah, it's a, the, like embodied energy yeah, it yeah, would yeah. take to get that out there, okay. Uh, and then the second one is is you have it's more or less real time, so you could do sort of a, a hymn book say application where everyone's reading from the same page of the book at the same time and singing along. Is it fast enough for that? Yeah, um, it uh, it's as fast as you want it. So if you want it, uh, if you're not concerned about the battery consumption, it can be instantaneous. If you want to conserve power, um, then not. Thank you. Hi. Um, so. Great demo, great product. I, I think this is really cool. So you specifically are signage, so people cannot interact or have any touch events with the sign, because often people have questions, right? No, we do have uh, interactive devices. Even the big screens can be interactive. I mean, e-ink is launching at the end of the year, the 32-inch uh, displays, which um, this one's a six inch, so the big um, But they can all be, uh, um, interactive with touch screens. So Very cool. So they're touch screens. So what what type of sensors are you using? Projected capacitive or? Yeah. yeah. Nice. It's, it's capacitive touch. Nice. Anybody? Hands up. So I have a question for you. So why are you guys here? We have a lot of partners here. We have uh, customers here. Ying has an office here, so we're visit them, visiting uh, them also. And then we have some partners around here that want to change the world of signage. And uh, so, are you are, are, are you're here to visit your clients? You're here to raise money? You're here to do business development? Yeah, we're doing the business development. Also, we're like checking around because we're um, 
planning to move the business development to the uh, United States. Ah, why? Because we're from Slovenia. <laughs> 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 I didn't say hey, you said it. No, no, just kidding. It's good. It's good. Uh, I mean, it's obvious. So. Do you guys have color? We do I didn't have see color. color. Uh, we do have color. We've been working with color for the past two to three years, I think. Um, so since you're projected capacitive, what kind of filters do you use, especially when there's something in the public and there's a lot of fear, especially with the recent Ebola outbreaks? Every, everybody's freaking out about germs. Do you have filters that go on the screens that deal with that? Do you have things for sunlight readability? Like, what are the add-ons to the screens? Um, what we actually do, we leave that choice to the um, end producer. Uh, can I ask? Uh, can I answer that? We, when we started developing this, this was in 2006, I think. It was before Kindle and before iPad, and everybody was saying like, nobody is um, going to be touching it because the display is going to be dirty with, um, I don't know, with a lot of fingerprints and so prints and so on. So here, I guess it's going to be the same thing. You. It's up to the people that you want to touch it or not. That's your thing. I don't mean you can't do anything to protect the glass. Anybody else? Sarah. <laughs> um, this is not me tweeting somebody back. That's okay. Um, what What do you think is the most what has been the most interesting thing you've learned in developing this? That's a mashable question. That's not a TechCrunch <laughs> question. That is a, that's <laughs> completely a TechCrunch <laughs> question. Uh, yeah. That's something that... Hardware development is hard. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, but... Hard. Okay, yeah. but beyond that, I mean, obviously it's hard, but like, what's something that you learned that you didn't expect? It's gonna be so hard. <laughs> it, it's the truth. Seriously, if if we we know how hard it's gonna be uh, this road, I don't think we'd we'd gone. We 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 said eight years ago we're gonna build an iPad before iPads even existed, and we said, oh, how 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 hard can it be? It's gonna take us six months and we're done. That's the hardest realization that you. I would never got. think that about hardware. Yeah. Really, yeah. six months. Yeah, but it took us much, much Well, longer. I am. It took him two and a half years to get his wearable device out. Yeah. And that's Will I am. Yeah. That's that's amazing. Anyway, seems like you have a lot of legs to and a lot you can kind of add on to it in the future. What's what's next for you? Um, for us uh, to change the world of signage because it started okay, But no, but stop, stop. To change the world. Okay. But of like signage <laughs> but like Big difference. What's, like sign. what's the next thing you're adding on? Can you talk about that? Adding on. Uh, yeah, like what are you what are you working on next? What's your next version? We're launching the 32 inch uh, displays. All right. And Ying is launching them. We're driving them. Okay. Good answer. All right, guys. Thank you so much, and thank you for coming over from Slovenia <laughs> to our stage here.